hello whatever day it is I've put this chart on the front because it's quite a pretty looking chart and I haven't used it before Suez Canal traffic hey and the world GDP nicely put together isn't it so in blue going back to 1998 we have a Suez Canal traffic wobbling around zero that'll be its average traffic I imagine and it goes below its average and above its average you can see the shape of the Great Recession thing easily there that saddle downwards and upwards and it's going downwards again the world GDP is seemingly following it it's correlated presumably there's a bit of causation from well what is GDP to cause anything anyway they follow each other and at the end there kind of like what we'd call now there's a bit of a discrepancy now the Suez Canal traffic is what it is it has gone been going down for the last year but world GDP seems to me just to be hanging around in midair there a bit not quite knowing which what to do so what do we think it's going to do my guess would be it's going to go down and try and follow the Suez Canal traffic yeah, no, what do you think? Do you think Suez Canal traffic is going to go up? No, nor do I. So they are going to stay diverged, which is possible, I suppose. Or world GDP is going to come down quite soon. It's big things, so it doesn't happen overnight, but general trend, world GDP down. It's just been revised up by, <laughs> was it the IMF? The IMF in its world review but only by a little smidging and it's not very high anyway right this second chart flow chart um, from I found it on Barry Ritholtz and I don't really understand it but I understand it enough I think I understand it enough to like what it's trying to say right let's start in the top left financial shock now what the presumably you follow the arrow a financial shock would lead to a change in financial conditions we can all go for that next is real shock which would lead to a change in economic activity the next one relative price shock whatever all these things are I'm not quite sure but would lead to a change in inflation so let's go to the blue highlighted one a change in financial conditions if then go to go to change in economic activity if then go to change in inflation dot 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 down across to a change in policy rate that one out on the left is the central bank change in policy rate now what we would find generally of interest because we can more understand it is that bottom right one change in inflation so change in inflation let's presume upwards dot dot dots itself if then go to to change in policy rate the Fed might uh, put interest rates up to try and pull inflation rate down the Fed puts interest rates up even a little smidging and it will lead to a change in financial conditions which would lead to a change in economic activity what I think this flow is meant to be saying is even if the Fed puts the Fed funds target rate up it will soon be forced to put them down again I'll leave it there okay because the the, the extra import the explanation or uh, the reason I've put it in there kind of hopefully will be revealed with the rest of the charts um, if there are any more charts anyway the writings number three markets put off expected date of first Fed rate increase this is Wall Street Journal speculation continues to fade among Fed funds futures traders that the Federal Reserve will start raising rates in early 2014 monthly data show housing starts decline 
and stagnant industrial production were the latest numbers weighing on expectations of earlier Fed action. They come on the heels of a weaker than expected March employment report which came out on April 6. Volume recently picked up for a longer dated contract which prices in only 24% chance for committee to lift Fed funds rate half a percent at its meeting in late January 2014. That's down from 30% at Monday's settlement. They buy these bonds um, on the under, on betting, really, it's betting like all these things are, betting that the Fed funds rate will go up or down at a particular Fed funds meeting, open market meeting. And it's looking more and more unlikely that the Fed funds target rate will be raised in early 2014. So say the people that are betting other people's money on it. Going more over to Europe, the IMF in this report, it's in um, World Economic Outlook, I think. IMF says ECB should cut rates. ECB should cut rates, and they're at 1%, I think. Yeah, 1% they are. Keep tools to bolster growth. Now, we'll look into that. The European Central Bank should cut interest rates and keep its crisis measures in place to help Euro region growth. This is, say, so says the IMF. But I'll read that a bit more smoothly, the whole sentence now. The European Central Bank should cut interest rates and keep its crisis measures in place to help Euro region growth and support the banking system, according to the International Monetary Fund. Now that to support the banking system is rather more important, I think, to the IMF than the help Euro region growth, which just sounds good. Now, this is the IMF. What do they sound like? Just foreign, isn't it? Given, given, given the broad need for fiscal adjustment, much of the burden of supporting growth falls on monetary policy. Now, it would come out as boring as that and hard to be, hard to grab hold of some of this stuff, isn't it? But all that says is given the broad need for fiscal adjustment, there's a need for fiscal adjustment. At this time, normally they would recommend fiscal, government, they would recommend government spending. Much of the burden of supporting growth falls on monetary policy. In other words, the governments don't have what the IMF call um, headroom for fiscal adjustment. In other words, they say that the governments have borrowed and spent enough, so it falls on monetary policy. Monetary policy is central bank policy. The Washington-based lender, that's the IMF, said today in its World Economic Outlook, the ECB should lower its policy rate while continuing to use unconventional policies to address banks' funding and liquidity problems. In other words, support the insolvent bastards. Because they just don't know what to do with insolvent banks without it becoming blazingly and glaringly obvious that if that lot are insolvent, what about that lot? So they don't want to talk about anyone being insolvent. But if they don't, that is just pushing a, 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 a very big gorilla, riding a very big elephant under a rug. Okay, whatever. This is um, a paper, paper thing. Liquidity in times of crisis. Even the ESM needs it by Gross and Mayer. The abstract for it. Europe's policymakers are engaged in protracted discussion on whether and how to increase the size of the Euro Rescue Funds. The Euro Rescue Funds, the EFS and the ESM. In this policy brief, Daniel Gross and Thomas Mayer argue that this attention on the headline size of the EMS and EFSF is misplaced. They propose that a simpler solution would be to register the ESM as a bank. 
with access to the ECB under the same conditions as apply to any normal bank. This would provide a liquidity backstop for the EMS, which could refinance any secondary market interventions at the ECB. The size and guarantees given to the ESM would then become secondary. Are you following? I hope so. Miserere nobis, more pain in Spain, and more people having to try and write headlines about Spain and its economic problems and riffing off the rain in Spain from crumbs. Um, Pygmalion, uh, the, the singing version of Pygmalion, can't remember its name. Anyway, the never-ending banking system headache. And now this is a good article by Pater Tenenbarum, funny size website. I had trouble um, uh, getting it to the right size. Anyway, Spain's banking system continues to make waves and unwelcome headlines. On Friday, it became known that the banks have borrowed a record 316.3 billion euro from the ECB as of March, up from 169. That's not quite double, but it's getting on for it, and that's 28% of the gross borrowings of all banks in the euro area. Uh, leave the brackets out. This means Spain banks have little to no access to the interbank market or other private funding and have evidently made maximum use of the second Eltro. I just point that out, just saying that of the whole system, probably the world system, that's the weakest point. Doesn't mean it'll the system will ultimately break at its weakest point, but the Spanish banks do seem to be the weakest point. French banks not far behind. Right move. UK housing house asking prices up to pre-crisis records. Now, um, I'll just slip in here that I was doing my comments this morning on OTP and replying to people about my, at the moment... I'm exhausted, very tired. Don't know why. Maybe it's a bug, maybe it's something else. I just tired and emotional. Anyway, doing my comments, what came to mind was the lead up to the Second World War, an appeasement of Hitler or Germany. Appeasement just it's it's kind of it's looked upon normally is the wrong thing to have done and if they'd listened to Churchill things could have been different but really when it comes down to it what could they have done you know be stronger on Hitler put more blocks in place and really mean it or something but what you get then is kind of you causing the problems but if you do the appeasement thing then Hitler just does, or Germany, oversteps the mark and everybody absolutely recognises it, then it's fine then for you to come in and do your da-da, 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 whatever. You see what I mean? And it's, I think, similar. I didn't write this because I didn't want to really link the two together. But I, see, I do see this as slightly along those late 1930s lines with the with the um the banking crisis the the money crisis whereby appeasement is being done all over the place imf oecd imf saying uh central banks should just lend more money to everybody to keep this thing together it's very much like appeasement but what are the other options can the imf do what might be called the Churchill thing, although we never saw the Churchill thing, of saying, no, this is wrong, and, and put a, a stick in the ground and say, this must stop now. But no, because then it would be seen that the IMF had been the cause of the war, the, 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 the mega breakdown that will ensue. So, in a way, I can 100% understand that people go, um, appeasement, appeasement, just do this, just do that, 
put more money in, uh, cover this up, um, change accounting rules here, do everything we can. It's appeasement. But we can hopefully understand that there really aren't very many options open to normal uh, humans. Normal humans are open to this thing of, I don't want to cause fucking war. So they don't. So they just are doing the best they can to cover things up, to appease, to keep things going until it then does break. And then they can go hopefully into another mode of then doing something about it. But that will be a major problem because the doing something about it won't be as easy as having a direct target to attack. It'll be a much more diffuse problem. But we'll see that when it arises. So, OK, back to right move. UK house asking prices up to pre-crisis records. House asking prices rose 2.9%. Average uh, two hundred and forty-three thousand uh, pounds, above the old uh, record of two hundred and forty-two thousand pounds. Peace in our time. What do you do? I I don't know. Bye. <laughs>